Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, I can feel it in the air. A nice little beat that Benny Siegel made famous. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to help make it a little bit more famous because we got something we need to talk about. Now, my PDF hasn't opened up correctly, so I got to let it close first. And so what I got to do is I got to kill it. Get on out of here. We're going to talk about this right here, but I got to show you the PDF first. So y'all just hold on. Because we, we got to let y'all know that the courts were wrong. I'm the presumption killer. In more ways than one. That's what I go after. They're stupid presumptions. Ladies and gentlemen, sorry, we were working on the application for our um, Amera Legion and AMCF people. We're getting ready to start the arbitrations. And we're getting ready to start petitioning the arbitrators, respecting the arbitrations. Now, I do want all of you to know we just did a major appeal regarding the arbitration, which is going to impact all of you who did arbitrations. I did ask for you guys to give me an opportunity to bring that y'all way. So it will be shortly before that's taken care of. And ladies and gentlemen, I hit that button too quickly and now I'm stuck and now I got to unstuck myself. So I got to do the same thing I just did. I'm going to have to reinstall PDF Exchange. I don't want to, uh, but I am going to have to reinstall it because it's been giving me some problems and it's a conflict with the system. It's not so much PDF Exchange, it's a conflict with the system and... Uh, there is a repair feature, but I don't think it's going to solve the problem. You know what I'm saying? I can feel it in my... She can feel it in the air, y'all. It's in the air tonight. Um, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be handling the arbitrations on behalf of the Eon Foundation. Each of the contracts gave limited power of attorney for the Eon Foundation to represent the interests of the people as a result of the agreement you have with me to help resolve your issues those of you who came into the programs we're going to do the arbitration aspect first and then we're going to court so i do want all of you to know that this was never a game you're not going to be out in the middle of the uh highway trying to figure out how to get home not by yourself this is a group thing you know I am getting tired of this. This is going to be my third time doing this, and I don't appreciate that. And what's going on, y'all? Someone gave me a call the other day, so don't worry about what I'm doing in the background. Y'all just pay attention to what I'm saying, okay? Pretend, just pretend that I ain't saying it. Let me minimize everything else, and let me take care of some other things. I don't care about no messages. I didn't even do that one this time. Let's see if I can close this out without it giving me a problem. It looks like it wants me to. Now, I'm going to be playing I Can Feel It In That Air one more again, at least one more time. I want the Judiciary Act. Nope, it ain't going to let me do it. So, well, it may let me do it, but it ain't going to let me do it the way I just did it. So, hold on. I'm on the other side of the computer, so y'all will have to excuse me while I go ahead and build up some memory. And we're going to wait for that to finish this time. What I'm doing is I'm refreshing the memory. I was, I guess I was pretty low on some uh, rams. And so what I'm doing is I'm trying to increase that memory. We were at 3 gigabytes worth of virtual memory. And I need to be at least at 5 to 6 gigabytes of virtual memory. In order for us to do the video and in order for us to 
fill it in the air. We're at 7.5 gigabytes of virtual memory. And so, yay! Matter of fact, we'll take care of that. I'll start it one more again. Let's close the program. Come on now. All right, we'll close the program. We'll refresh this since we got some more RAM. And we're going to try it one more. This is what happens when you do things live, y'all. And I don't feel like starting this over again because then I'd have to remember everything I just said. I'm too tired to be remembering all that stuff. <sighs> okay, so now let's see if we can start it now. Yeah, we saved one point worth of memory on the Windows side, 1.6 gigabytes. So I can live with that. So I got to give it a second. Oh, you know what else I can do? There is something else I can do, and it's not going to let me do it, y'all. You see how it pulls up blank? That lets me know that it ain't going to let me do it. It's a conflict with the program, and so I'll just have to live with it for now and reinstall the program later. I'm going to pause, y'all, for just a second while I get that going. Give me one second, y'all. Okay, first of all, got to turn the voice recognition off sorry had to turn the voice recognition off first of all it's been about over an hour and <laughs> since I started this video when I put you guys on hold I've gone outside I've had a conversation with somebody who uh, paid for a consult because they have a legal situation going on and the unique thing is and I will tell all of you the way it is he talked to an attorney before he called me and everything that I was telling him the attorney had already told him but I, I even told him, I said, the attorney probably already told you, blah, 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 you know, um, because I'm not going to tell you anything different. I'm just going to tell you the things the attorney is not permitted to tell you. So I'll give you both sides of the coin so that you'll be able to have a well-rounded understanding. This gentleman's situation is not the greatest, but I've given him some things that he can do to make things a little bit better including some arguments um, I can't tell them to you guys not this one because if I tell it to you then by the time he uses it it will be worthless so only after he uses what I'm telling him because I've never told it to anybody before and that happens that with conversations but I will tell it to you after he uses it look Ladies and gentlemen, I just told you about what happened with uh, going in with the SEC case, bringing up points that nobody's brought up before, things that attorneys can't bring up. But from my position, I can. Now, this is, this is exactly what I'm showing you. Now, this is the Judiciary Act, the first uh, Congress, the very first Congress, Session 1. This is the Judiciary Act. We're going to go to page 93, the very last page. Well, we're going to go to page 92. I apologize. We're not going to go to the very last page. We're going to go to page 92. This is 92. I want y'all to pay attention to something. Somebody sent this over to me. And they said, hey, take a look. I said, well, we already got this. You take a look. I just put this stuff up there for y'all. Ladies and gentlemen, I did. It's on the laws you didn't know exist. The Judiciary Act is part of the laws you did not know exist. I added it to it. Because the Judiciary Act, this is the act that says that they cannot dismiss your complaint for failure to state a claim or any of that bull crap that they be saying. Okay, now I do need you all to understand and I do need you all to pay attention. There are a couple of things here you all need to know. We're going to look at section number 35, see, 35, section 35, and be it further enacted. It's an enactment of Congress that in all the courts of the United States, the parties may plead and manage their own causes personally or by the assistance of such counsel or attorneys at law as by the rules of said courts respectively shall be permitted to manage and conduct causes therein. Ladies and gentlemen, some of you picked up on it because you heard me talking about it recently. Many of you have not. So let me read it again. 
their own causes personally or by assistance of such counsel or attorneys at law. Do you see the three entities there? One entity separated by the word or, another entity separated by the word or, and another entity following the word or. Counsel or attorney means that these two words are not synonymous. But haven't they been telling us that for years, that counsel and this is the first judiciary act. This is Article 3, people. This is Article 3. The courts recognize that counsel and attorney are not the same thing. They never were. This was a cousin, an uncle, a niece, a nephew, a brother, a dog, a cat, a Bible, a piece of code. Doesn't matter. This was not an attorney. An attorney and a counsel are two different things. We have allowed them because we haven't read the law. This is the Judiciary Act. Now, if you don't think that this act has any bearing, let me show you how much bearing it has. This is the final page of this particular document. It's not the final page of the Judiciary Act. So you're going to go, this is the annotated version of the Judiciary Act. I had Article 3. I'll see if I can get the link for it for you guys and post it underneath. But I want you to pay attention. Congress have, by the Constitution, exclusive authority to regulate proceedings in the courts of the United States. And the states have no authority to control these proceedings, except as far as the state process acts are adopted by Congress or by the courts of the United States under the authority of Congress. Congress regulates the courts. Hold on now. Congress regulates the courts. Okay? Congress regulates the courts. The courts later said that Congress can't regulate us. Yes, Congress does regulate the courts. The courts, pay attention, this is what established the courts of the United States and make sure you understand, and the states... See, and the courts of the United States and the courts of the state have no authority to control these proceedings. In other words, they don't exercise authority over Congress. They don't get to tell, dictate to Congress what Congress can and cannot do regarding the courts. Congress sets the policies of the court, not the other way around. Okay? Now, <sighs> I am so glad I finally got that to y'all's attention because guess what I done did? I done did something. I got to pause y'all for a second while I undoes it. Give me one second, y'all, because it's a doozy. All right. Now y'all going to get a bonus because I ain't even talked about this before. Sorry. Uh, there's this issue with these flying little termites, and I got uh, this air conditioning and this... Uh, what do you call it? Air freshener for them. And they, I don't think they like the air freshener I bought for them. Oh, well. Because uh, it's nighttime and, you know, I got the lights on and everything. And I open the door and they just be flying on in. Flying on in. So I have to get them something to fly on out. Yeah, I, I, I did, uh, gave some perfume to this fly earlier today. And he just rolled over on his back like he couldn't get enough. Um, but, you know that's what happens when you give them perfume I, I don't think they like it okay ladies and gentlemen what I did is I asked Bard I said hey Bard look here why did you lie to me now Bard's like what you talking about I didn't lie to you I say Bard you stated that an attorney and counsel were synonymous the Judiciary Act section 35 of September 24th 1789 says that they are not the same so why did you lie to me so he comes back saying oh I apologize you are correct, an attorney and counsel are not synonymous. However, in some contexts, blah, blah, blah. I ain't asked you about no context, mother. That's what I told it next. So guess what it said after I told him I didn't ask you about no context. Ain't nobody asked you about no context. I said I did not ask you how individuals have come to use it in the present day. Because it says, I apologize for the confusion. You are correct. An attorney and counsel are not synonymous in all contexts. Uh-uh, you ain't getting like that with me. Uh-uh, gonna narrow you down, mother. 
ladies and gentlemen, here's the bonus that you need to know with these AI systems. Like I said, they don't like being uh, suggested that they're not telling you the truth. So just ask them, why did it lie? Then pose your question. You know, the question that you know what's going to lie to you about, but now you just ask them, why did it lie? Because he still tried to keep the same line, so watch what I do now, because I said, I didn't ask you about its use in the present day. I said, according to the Judiciary Act of 1789, specifically, that was the context. I don't care about Britain, what goes on in Britain, and I don't care about the original meaning as applied in the Sixth Amendment uh, excuse me, yeah, the Sixth Amendment, that's where you first hear about counsel, which is the same meaning as the Judiciary Act of 1789. It has the exact same meaning. They were both written around the exact same time. So the right to counsel is the same counsel that they're speaking about in the Judiciary Act. Hold on now. I want y'all just to listen to what he has to say. You are correct. I, I know I'm correct. For the confusion. No, stop apologizing. The counsel in the Judiciary Act of 1789 and the Sixth Amendment has a specific meaning that is different from its modern usage. In these contexts, the term counsel refers to a person who is authorized to appear in court on behalf of another person, but who is not an attorney. This could include a next friend, a cousin, a relative, a doctor, or a religious leader. I understand okay. that you care about the original meaning of the term count. Shut up. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, when he said a person who is authorized, it has nothing to do with being authorized. The courts don't authorize you. There is nothing in law giving them the authority to tell you who you can and cannot talk to about your case. Okay. The right to an attorney is the right to an attorney. They don't have any jurisdiction otherwise over it just want y'all to keep that in mind all right so there you go judiciary act letting you know what an attorney really is and what an attorney really is not okay and that you have the right to counsel the right to counsel and the right to an attorney are not the same so stop letting them dictate to you that you can only have a attorney an attorney can only represent the interests of the court you don't believe me we're not going to ask bard because bard is stupid he lied to me. Of course he's stupid. We're going to do it this way. We're going to go do Google because Google's the top one. So we're going to go 7. C-J-S stands for Corpus Juris Secundum, numeral 4. 7, the 7th volume, Corpus Juris Secundum, section number 4. The 7th volume, Corpus Juris Secundum, Section number four. Here's the problem. You're not going to see too many people talking about it. Okay? But what you're going to see, see, he's saying not enough context. They know what corpus juris secundum is. Corpus, body, juris, laws, secundum. Encyclopedia. Come on, hurry up. Because you guys need to know. Go do your research, people. It's going to pull the document up for me. Come on now. Here it is right here. His first duty is to the court and to the public, not to the client. And whenever the duties of his client conflict with those he owes to that of the court as an officer of the court, in the administration of justice, the former must yield to the latter. So what? The former must yield to the latter. You must yield to the courts. Conflicting. Say what? As an officer of the court, an attorney is indispensable to the administration of justice and is intimate and particular in its relationship to the vital and vital to the well-being of the court. An attorney has a duty to aid the court in seeing that actions and proceedings in which he is engaged as counsel are conducted in a dignified and orderly manner. Okay, corpus juris secundum, ladies and gentlemen. 
Corpus Juice Economy. You know what? I'm gonna take this page right here because I need I need this page. I need Corpus Juice Economy. I went and looked it up when I was in Puerto Rico when I went to the University of San Juan. I went and looked it up, y'all. But I don't I don't see my copy section. Look, give me a second. About done contact. Nope, ain't no copy. Even down here, ain't nothing down here to copy. I'm clicking on it. Let me click over here. Because I got to get it for y'all. Hold on now. All right. Visual aids. Download files. Two formats. I want PDF. Get PDF. I want PDF. Get PDF. So, ladies and gentlemen, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the link from archive.org. I'm going to take this link right here that takes you directly to the PDF. And I'm going to put it in the conversation. I messed up, y'all. I wasn't trying to open up Descript. So, let me go back. Because I definitely wasn't trying to do that. I just, I went up too high. So let me copy, and I'll put this at the bottom of the video so that you guys can have a copy of Corpus Juris Secundum, so that you can have section number four and the other information that goes with it. So anytime somebody tries to force an attorney on you, no, I have a right to counsel of choice and I have a right to counsel who's gonna put my interest first. That's my agreement. Your interest first, no. I don't want my counsel to put the court's interest first. My attorney is not an officer of the court sorry the court cannot be a party to this case so if my attorney is an officer of the court then that's a conflict of interest because my attorney cannot be an employee of the court the court is who's prosecuting me sorry no the prosecution you are part of the state aren't you okay well then the state can't prosecute me and represent me at the same time that is the largest conflict of interest but you guys have got to start understanding this i've been saying that stuff since i was what 17 years old public defenders I haven't had a public defender and I don't know how long I, I can say it's been at least almost 40 years I don't take public defenders no you can't give me no public defender we all know what public defenders do but now all the other attorneys do the same thing sell you down a river old man river okay old man river I'm sorry I got to do this again because you see it didn't pop up and I got to make sure the link works because I can't just give y'all any old link because then y'all be sitting up here asking me all kind of questions and I'll have to curse. Y'all have to tell y'all where to go. You know what I'm saying, Vern? And, you know, nobody needs and deserves that. Ladies and gentlemen, it ain't pulling up. It ain't pulling up. So what? I'll make sure of the link before I send it to you. You know what? I'm going to do this for y'all. I'm going to do y'all one last favor. We were needing a coin to buy some uh, crypto. Go to bank literally will allow you to transfer and purchase crypto with its account yay okay wait hold on what he's saying uh-uh this is geisner he, he, he's talking about crypto they're having a hearing tomorrow in congress about crypto see we we're just talking about crypto how you can buy crypto look at that it's time to move crypto from chaos to order. Well, this isn't recent. He said this before. This was uh, several weeks ago he said that stupid stuff. Ain't nothing chaotic about crypto. They want people to believe that. I can't see when this article was written, but I ain't got time for this idiot. He's upset because the judge ruled that XRP, when it's traded between individual investors, are not securities. When it's traded between institutions, it is a security, according to the court. I don't believe that. It's still a question. But when it's traded amongst individuals, those are private trades. And as I told the court, peer-to-peer -peer trades. Because it's amongst individuals and not amongst a corporation. And a peer-to-peer -peer trade, that's private. It ain't got nothing to do with these idiots. Man, look at that. That creature looks, he looks like a creature, don't he? Ain't no lagoons got to be anywhere near him. Sorry about that, y'all. Let's do the pasting. And let's see if we can pull up the document in this browser. 
this way I'll make sure that see we got the correct link so got the correct link we're gonna send this to y'all shortly I was gonna copy it because that's what I was do I was copies and I was gonna keep it for myself okay cuz I better and um, then you guys will be able to get it ward of the court that's right you become a ward of the court but I do like the fact that the person at uh, Thomas Clark Nelson used to be um, but the person at archive.org took the time to post this up it could have been Thomas Clark Nelson uh, took the time to post this for you guys so that y'all could have it so I'll have this document uh, page for you guys for the attorney client so that you guys will have that information hey everybody have a good day I do hope you appreciate the attorney client privilege video gotta go It won't let me go, y'all. Okay.